Okay, hello, hello, Facebook. Good evening. Let's do this again. Good evening. Let's do this again. Today, I'm going to be talking about how to come out of debt and to stay out of debt. And the reason I'm doing this is because I've noticed that there is an epidemic of debt in our society today. If you see 10 people on the streets, at least nine of them are heavily in debt, if not all 10. And then if you ask yourself, um, in the past 365 days, how many days have you um, stayed without a debt? And then if you ask people around, you know, it might be uh, very surprising what you find. So the problem of debt is real. And over the years, I'm also speaking about this because this is real. I'm being as authentic as possible to you. I've had this same problem. And I think one of the worst things that I've ever experienced in my life is being in debt. Being in debt. At some point, I was owing so much, tens of millions, you know, to the banks and to individuals. And the scripture said that a debtor is, sorry, uh, yeah, a debtor is um, a slave to the lender. And when you owe money, especially this stubborn debt that are following, that have followed you for months and some even years, because I have met people who have been owing for five years, seven years, ten years it is horrible you know see what it does to your mind what it does to your self-confidence is just terrible if you've been in debt before you know what i'm talking about okay so it takes a toll on your self-confidence and then many times you know you can't actually function fully because the person you are owing you think he might be watching and um, you want to send your child to an expensive school a very good school yeah but you are doing it in hiding because the person you owe will be wondering oh you have this kind of money to pay and then you have not paid me my money so it makes you to live a very uncomfortable life you know you just lack confidence uh, you can't travel so let's say you want to take a trip, you know, summer trip to whatever, and it makes sense. The, the person you're owing money is actually correct. Why would you be traveling to Dubai? And it might actually be that somebody else paid for it and all that, but it's like this guy, you're owing me money, and you say you don't have money to pay back, and then you're traveling to Dubai for holiday. And then hmm, God save you when you post um, pictures on your... Uh, social media everybody's on social media this is and then the guys you are owing are seeing you in your flamboyant dress and then you know with a nice car and things like that so if if you are in debt you, you, you don't live a complete life i tell you you don't live, it's a miserable life you know being in debt and besides um i have counseled a lot of people who have been in debt and then they wanted to harm themselves some people are pressed to the point that they just want to take their own lives because they are owing and then they don't see anywhere um, that they are going to pay you know that money so but the problem of so the problem of, of debt is an epidemic you know people are owing now second thing i want to talk to you about is how do people in nigeria in this part of the world in africa how do they readily slip into debt it might be the same thing for americans and things like that but those guys, their debt problem is on a different level in the Western world. So, being in debt is a human is a is a humanity problem. It is a is a crisis everywhere. It's a crisis. I mean, when I go to the U.S. and then I talk to these people, and so many of them in debt. In fact, I met a woman. Um, I went for a conference, you know, somewhere in uh, San Antonio, and then I had to fly through New Jersey to meet a friend, and then there were a couple of Nigerians there, and I met this woman. This woman was already in her 60s. She said, at that time she was owing um, close to $300,000. She was close to $300,000 in debt. 
Okay, the, I think that woman is from Benin, if I remember correctly. And um, how did she come about this debt? She f financed her daughter in the medical college, you know, over there. And of course, medicine is very expensive over there. And then this woman is already in her 60s. As so of that time, she was working three jobs. And she, the, the, the most painful part of what she told me was that she had always had a vision of coming to help young, um, young Nigerian girls. It was, it's been her lifelong dream to mentor them. But as she was seeing herself in that situation, she, she didn't see that vision, that dream coming to pass. Debt is a dream killer. Debt is a dream killer. And I know what debt did to me. I know, I know what it did to me. I, you know, the worst thing was what, what it tried to do to my self-confidence. Because debt just says, you know, basically, listen, you can't control your life because you are a slave to other people. Yeah, and it's a terrible feeling. So many people have, you know, so death also causes depression. It causes serious depression. And it easily creates men mental health issues. Financial debt creates serious mental health issues. Okay, so how do people commonly enter into debt in this part of the world? Number one, and that's the commonest, and that is also how I entered most of the debt I owed many years ago. Number one, people um, all of a sudden chance buy something that looks like a, a fantastic money opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you bring like 1.5 million right now, if you bring 5 point something million naira right now, we are going to make a kill. This your 5 million is going to turn into 25 million. And so we now go around, you know, borrowing money from friends, borrowing money because now we start dreaming about, oh, that's that holiday we want to, I want to take my family to, oh, that car we want to buy, oh, that plot of land. And then all of a sudden, this thing beclouds your judgment. And then you, because of what you think you're going to get you know, from this money opportunity, you go and clean up everywhere, borrow from your friends, borrow from your family, borrow from the bank, borrow from your cooperative, borrow from your office, and then you put this 10 million naira together because you're going to get 150 million you know, out of it. And then you tell, show everybody, oh, this thing will work. This thing will work. Don't worry. Just give me one month and I'll pay you. I'll cash out and pay, pay you your money. And then it fails. And then one month turns to so one year to five years to seven years. Bad blood, you know, just creates bad blood, you know, between you and then the people you relate to. So that's one way people... Uh, get into debt. I remember somebody, um, a, a man told me, you know, how his son borrowed money to do something related to crypto. And of course, that thing failed. And then the guy is on the run and he's in a depressive state, wants to harm himself, you know. And then I remember also working with um, some bank staff I trained a couple of years ago. And um, one of them, um, I remember he came to me, he said, look, Mr. Obo, how did you find the courage to quit a job with Shell? That he himself, he hates this bank work and all that, but that, you know, but that he can't leave. So I asked him, I don't want to mention the bank, but I discovered it's very common, you know, it was very common then. I don't know if it's still common with uh, people who work in the bank right now. So he said, I can't leave this job, but I, so, so I said, so why can't you leave? He said, I can't leave. He said, can't? And I don't like hearing that word, can't. He said, no, he can't leave. I said, why not? He said, the money he's borrowed, um, the money he's borrowed from the system, that he cannot finish paying it until about three and a half years. So for three and a half years, he was going to be a slave in order to pay the money he borrowed. Another person in a different bank in Port Harcourt also told me he ran into some serious financial problems. His own was even terrible because he used to take some idle money from clients and then do some deals within the banks, loan to people or, you know, in the banks, um, people who come to borrow money. So he just takes some idle, I don't know how he did it, but he would take some idle money in the bank or some money from clients and then lend out, you know, to people, contractors and people who come to do something and then get the money back with interest. So he did a, a heavy one and then those people never paid back. Horrible. So that's one way people slip into debt. 
they see something that looks like a great opportunity to make a huge money and then they go borrow money to put into it. Uh, so if this was how you get, got into debt, I want you to comment and say, just put in the comments, you know, right now, I can't even see the comments, you know, I'm new to this. But just say, that's me, okay? Put it in the comment there. The second way people get um, into debt in this part of the world um, is, um, you know, people borrow, people take consumer loans. So many times the financial institutions, you know, the banks, you know, they advertise these consumer loans and then they tell you uh, buy today don't worry about paying now just buy today you can pay later and then it's so juicy because now that generator that diesel generator you've been wanting to buy you couldn't that uh, 42 inch television you've been wanting to buy and then you couldn't buy that that whatever you know the car you've been wanting to buy you couldn't buy that oh and the bank tells you oh don't worry come come, come let's give you your money let's give you the money you know, to buy, don't worry about paying now, you can pay later. And that's how people are hooked into debt. And they find themselves hooked, you know, just trapped into a terrible debt that lasts, follows them for years. And then every income that they are getting, a major part of your salary, goes into servicing something that they never knew. And these things have some terrible conditions that your emotions becloud you when they are giving you these promises. And then you go buy. That was also how I got into one of my debts. You know, a bank, I don't want to mention the bank, they came up with this juicy offer. And this was around July of that year. And they said, oh, pick any car you want. Pick any car, brand new car you want, you know, from Sony Motors and from all these places and things like that. And don't bother about paying now. You can start paying in six months, months time. Guys, you know, I've always wanted to own this. Uh, at that time, Nissan Armada came. I just loved it. Many of you who know me personally know that I had a Nissan Armada. And that was how I got that Nissan Armada. <laughs> I just went to the Sunny Motors in Victoria Island. Within a day or two, I drove out of that place, you know, with this tear rubber, as Nigerians call it. I didn't know I was driving into a problem. <laughs> I didn't know I was driving into a problematic future. A future filled with debt that will torture me for years for years because I don't know something about that bank I don't know whether the thing is what's the word whether it's jinxed because you take that loan and something always happens it's as, as if it's jinxed something always happens and then you will default they ended up of course taking their money taking uh, uh, take them back that car they repossess it and then they still came after me to pay all this heavy accumulated interest guys it's not worth it the other way people get into debts in nigeria believe it or not people borrow money to host uh the talk of a town wedding program and i'm always like oh my god how would people start a family with debt you borrow money to to have a society wedding because oh, i don't want my wedding to be you know look at all the other people's wedding it was flashy it was what look at you know the kind of car that they used to come and carry carry the bride you can't use this your little toyota camry i want a limo i want that you know and, and they say i want um, you know these uh, you know whatever <laughs> so and then people borrow money to sponsor a wedding. It's terrible. And people borrow money for to sponsor their birthday parties. People borrow money to sponsor graduation. And you start your family with a debt. And before you know it, something leads to the other, something leads to the other. The marriage becomes so toxic because you have so much money that you borrowed that you're not earning, um, paying back. The other way people get into debt is, um, you know, there's perhaps an emergency, some health situation, or maybe some house rent emergency. And then people say, please, please, please lend me this money. I need, my landlord is coming to do this. Please, please lend me this money. School fees, they are going to take my, so emergency, financial emergencies. And then they borrow money on the short term. And then once the trouble is over, they discover that they can't pay the money back. All right, so let me know, how did you get into debt? I would like to know more. How did you get into debt? What I've shared with you, I got into debt through this bank consumer loan. 
I also got into debt, you know, the first way I mentioned, by, um, um, you know, uh, taking, uh, taking money to invest into something that looks like it was a fantastic financial opportunity. In fact, that's how, that's how I lost so much money because that invest, investment, get rich big thing, you know, it failed. And finally, let's talk about how do you come out of debt, especially the stubborn debt, that debt that has followed you, you know, some debt have followed you year after year for five years. And one of the saddest things is actually when people die owing money. When people die and then they leave debt for their wives and children, um, it's a terrible thing. Please, brother, guys, if you're married, I pray that this will never happen to you. May it never happen to you, may it never happen to me. That what we leave for our children and wives when we are dying is debt. It's a terrible thing. I don't want to mention the word, but it's, a, it, you know, it, it's, it's almost a curse. And there was a man, true story, you know, who, um, who died, but he was, owing, he was owing lots of people. And the creditors came on the day they were burying the man and refused for his uh, 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 corpse, his uh, coffin, to be put in the ground. They made a scene that he was very embarrassing. And they said that the children must pay the money right there before they put the man on the ground. So even... Even you know, so some debts follow you, and they don't let you to. They don't allow people to bury you, so don't let that happen to you. And then one of my, one of my clients, you know, uh, I consult for their hospital. True story. These are the kind of things you watch sometimes on in movies, and you think it's fiction. So a, a guy was admitted. A man was admitted there, and then shortly after that, you know, somebody called. I don't know how they got the name of the the, the number. Of the doctor but this doctor told me people started calling one particular person called say I heard that this man was admitted in your hospital he said doctor that man must not die he was shouting on the book he said doctor that man must not die doctor that man must not die because the guy was owing him so indeed a debtor is a slave to the lender don't find yourself in that kind of situation so what do you do to come out of this debt Number one, I must say that it is hard. There's no easy solution to paying back your debt. It is a hard process. You must make up your mind that this is hard, but that you're going to do it. So the first thing is actually to even determine that you're going to pay. Because shockingly, a lot of people in this part of the world, is a horrible thing and it's a curse. The Bible says that the wicked borrows with the intention not to pay back. He said the wicked borrows and doesn't pay back. So don't, 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 be, don't, be, don't be classified a wicked. Don't be classified as a wicked soul. So the way the Bible looks at wickedness is that you borrowed money. Somebody trusted you. After all this sweet talk, trusted you, gave you money. And you said, oh, I'm going to return it in two weeks. Two years' time, you've not paid back. So you must make up your mind that you're going to recover your honor and your self-worth and your 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 what's the your, the impeccability of your word your faithfulness because your character because it speaks to character how can you borrow and then intentionally not want to pay back even if you borrow the money from a family member or, or from a friend the moment you say look i'll return this money make sure if the person gave you money as a gift that's a different thing but you use your mouth and convince the person, I'm going to return this money in two weeks. It has happened so many times, two weeks down to two years. And then you're not paying back this money. And you're not saying anything about it. Okay. So then number two, take care of your mental health. Because debts have very serious implications on, the mental, on mental health. It creates lots of frustration, anxiety. And it can change the way you behave, even when you enter the house. It can change even the atmosphere in the family. How do you take care of your mental health? Practice mental hygiene. Practice mental hygiene. Because the garbage you put in here, the garbage that will come out. And, and if you're going to come out of debt, you're going to need this thing. This is where it's all going to happen first. If it doesn't happen here, 
you can't come out of debt because believe me even debt is a, is a mental problem sometimes people are so uh, frustrated their mental health about the money that they are owing is so messed up that they turn to drugs or they turn to alcohol or they turn to sex or they turn to something just to use to evade or to what's the word uh, is it evade um no the word i'm looking for is not evade but it has something to do with avoidance you know just kind of numb the pain and the realities of the pain of the debt that you're owing so take care of this and then any day anytime for some of you who have followed me on television before and all that i would always say even though i was on tv um i was on tv because you listen to tv I was on TV because you listen to TV, but if nobody's listening to TV, then I don't need to be on TV, but just to tell you to throw away your television. And if you must keep it, be very disciplined about the things you watch. Okay? And then clean up your social media feed. Clean up because the kind of things you follow, the hashtags you follow, the people you follow, you need to clean it up. I'm very deliberate about who I follow. If you go to my Instagram account, you can get a chance and see the, the kind of things I have. Because the people you follow and the accounts you follow will determine the kind of will determine the kind of content that flows through your feed. So clean up your feed, clean up the things that come to your mind. Because you're gonna need a good mind to solve your debt problem. While you are doing that, you're cleaning up, you've got also to replace it with great content. So launch yourself into a journey of personal development. This, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a, you're asking, what does I have to do with my pain of my debt? A lot. A lot. Because the only strategy that will liquidate your debt is to create more income. And the only way to create more income is through this. This is where all income is created. Because now when you clean up this place and then you're receiving good thoughts, you're setting your mind on things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are worthy, things that are noble. Before you know it, great ideas, because you need great ideas for earning income, for doing well, we begin to come here. So you need, you need mental hygiene. The third practical thing you're gonna do is to make a list of all your debts list all of them because when i was trying to manage to deal with my debt the um is it a word like baddest the baddest thing i did you know was to carry it all in my head and then what i eventually discovered was that um when i wrote down all the people i was owing money and how much i was owing them i discovered that my head actually made it like 10 times bigger it was looking like I was owing half a, bi half a billion naira when it was just about one tenth of that. By the time I finished writing, you know, so it reduces the pressure from your head. You know, when you transfer how much you're owing on paper, then um, the next step is to come up with ideas on how you are going to generate money. Because you can't pay your existing debt by borrowing money from other people, to, you know, like they say, borrow from Paul, uh, borrow from Peter to pay Paul. So the only way is that there must be a way for income to increase in your life. And then the quickest skill, the quickest skill that can get you the income to pay off your debt is sales. Is sales. In fact, you're one sale away to liquidate all your debt. Imagine, for instance, that you're very good at selling. You might not be the, the one that has the property in Lekki, all right? But there's a property in Lekki that is selling for uh, 300 million. And then you go to the owner and say, I'm good at selling. I want to sell this. What, what are you asking? 300 million. All right. Are you willing to pay me 5% if I get this thing sold? Look, there's no owner who wants to really sell his property. That will not be very, more than excited to do 5%. How much is 5% of 300 million? That's 15 million already. Isn't it? Isn't that correct? That's, that's 15 million. Okay, now, but you're so good that you even sell that thing for 350 million. I'm just giving you an example. And then I'm telling you, people are doing this and I'm telling you, people are doing it. <laughs> so that you haven't done it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. And then you sell this thing for 350 uh, million. That's 50 million. And 
plus 15 million. How much is that? 65 million. And you can liquidate all your debt. But you really have to be very good at selling. And then there's also digital selling and all that. We won't go into that, you know, now. You know, putting out a program, a very excellent sales page. Um, and then selling either a physical product or something digital can help you raise money, you know, very quickly. You know, people, are, people young girls are making money selling uh, a snail, spice snail on Instagram, uh, spice fish and uh, roasted chicken. And they're taking orders. You know, so you can sell your way out of any financial debt, out of any financial problem. In fact, during the five days of abundance, I'm going to do a lot around incre increasing your selling skills. And then also rewire the way people think about selling in this part of the world. Selling is probably the number, one, the noblest profession ever there is. Because if you have something that can help people, like I'm running that abundance challenge, because I know it's going to help a lot of Nigerians. So if I don't sell it and tell you and make it easy for you to be part of it, it's wickedness. Because I have a system, something that can help you. And I just say, okay, I don't like to sell. I don't want to sell like I'm selling. Get over it. Get over it. That's wickedness. So I'm currently selling that program because I know I have something I can that can help Nigerians. There's an epidemic of financial adversity, which I believe is unwarranted. And basically, it's because you know, scripture says my people perish for lack of knowledge. It's not the economy that is creating the financial adversity, it's lack of knowledge. And that's what I'm going to share with you, 23rd to 27th of August. And then if you haven't, um, if you haven't joined that challenge and registered, um, I, think, I think you're missing out. You're on your own. Go check it out. If it's something that you think that, that can help you, if it's something you think you're interested in, because there's no pressure. It doesn't take anything from me if you, if you join. It doesn't take anything out of me if you don't join. But it is there for you to take advantage of. Uh, and so the other thing, um, after writing it down and then thinking about how you're going to you know, increase your income, then the other critical thing about managing your debt, coming out of debt, is please, please, I did it and it was very powerful, it helped me. Don't wait for your creditor to be the one calling you. Reach out to the creditor. Somebody gave you 2.5 million naira, which you said you will return in one month. Guy, it's three years right now. It's already three years. And then you don't talk to the person. That's what makes people very angry. And then some people have gone to the extreme of eliminating their debtors because of it. Somebody gave you money from trust. And it was 5 million. You said, oh, I'm going to give it to you in three weeks. And it's three years now and you're not calling him. It can be very annoying. So when I discovered that, the, the financial institution I was owing, I was the one that would reach out to them. And I said to them, please, I intend to pay you, but this is what is going on. Because I remember around that time I started a business and it failed. Two businesses. And I told them, listen, I did this, it failed, but that I'm not giving up. I'm going into another one. I just want you to know that I feel bad that I'm still owing you. And I appreciate that. I appreciate your kindness in understanding that I'm not doing this deliberately. You see, because if I reach out to the person I'm owing constantly, just giving them updates, please, this is what I'm, what, this is what I'm going through, this is what's happening, and all that and all that. And I, I remember that that time also happened within the time, you know, that I'm paying, I was paying school fees abroad in dollars and things like that. So I, I used to tell them, this is the situation. I can't halt, you know, the children's uh, development and all that. They are growing because I don't want them to suffer um, as a result of my incompetence, you know, my financial incompetence and things like that. So this is what's going on. This is what's going on. So the fact that I was the one calling them and then they weren't the ones reaching out to me. It said something about my character and it gave them some comfort. So don't owe people and then not call them to talk about it, to, see, to at least let the people know that I... I'm going to uh, pay that. Then um, I was owing a, a landlord, you know, 1.2 million. Um, we had stayed in his place, and then um, you know had to quit because at that time I couldn't pay rent. And um, so as I was leaving, I told this man, 
an elderly man, I said, I will, I will, I will definitely pay you your money. I do not know how I'm going to do it, but I will pay you. I said, on my honor, I'm going to pay you back your money. So I kept in touch. And then once in a while, I'll send a text message and say, please, daddy, I still remember. I want you to know that I have not forgotten your money. This is what's going on right now in my business. This is what's going on in my finances right now. But I want you to be rest assured I'll pay you. Guys, do you know that this thing took seven years? But within the seven years, this man did not disturb me. He knew. In fact, he confessed. He said, look, oh boy, I know that you're telling me the truth. Because if not, you would have seen the other side of me. For seven years, this man was patient. And then one day, I called him. I said, please, daddy, send me your, uh, your account number, your present account number, the active account number, and I will pay you back this money. Oh my God, it was just amazing. Seven years. But because I was communicating, and he knew, and I gave him my word. I said, this is me. My name is Ogbo Awoke Ogbo. And then I hold my word much more valuable than my name. My word is important because like my word is me. And then he sent me the bank account and I paid that money. So communicate with the people you are owing. Let them know, please, we will pay you. Things are hard for us right now as a family. We don't even have what to eat. This is not an excuse. We were just financially irresponsible. What we wanted to do with your money, we, it didn't work out and things like that. So please, please, please be very patient. Accept that I'm embarrassed, you know, for what I, I did and things like that, you know. And then human beings, you know, they will understand. People, people, you know, even if they are angry, but the fact that you're the one reaching out regularly saying, please, we know we are owing you. We are doing something. My husband and I, we are doing something about it. Give us more time. You also know that the economy is challenging. It is not an excuse. We will pay you. We don't know when, but we are making effort. It's very, very helpful. Um, okay, so I want to end it here because a lot of people have complained that if it is long, that they don't have, have enough data to watch it through. But I hope this has been very useful to you. And uh, if you haven't joined the five days of abundance challenge that is happening, it's virtual. It's going to be between 8 p.m. and then 9.30 p.m. West African time um via zoom virtual you're not going to need to travel to anywhere in the comfort of your home i'll take you through um the five days of abundance challenge to expose you to what is possible for you and also to give you worksheets and then guides as to how to take yourself from where you are right now in your business and then in your finances to what, what is possible in spite of what they say we are going through right now I get, believe me, recession is only in the mind. There's no, there's, there's no recession. There is abundance. There is abundance. Money is not scarce. If you think money is scarce, go to the airport and see people traveling. Go to these big supermarkets and then see what people are pulling out. Money is not scarce. People are still going to school, very expensive schools and paying. People are still <laughs> buying expensive fabrics and then uh, the other day, we went to a restaurant in Ikoi where people who were seeing bills like 100K, people are eating there. If I mention the name of the place, you know, you, you go. Because uh, my friend and I just had, um, he had coffee, I had orange juice, and then um, and, uh, and a sandwich. And then when the bill came, 30K. And when you enter there, you will not see enough seat. You will have to wait. So who told you that money is cut? I'm talking about as of, as of today. You go to that restaurant, you won't find seat. And then typically, you know, you, you, can, you can easily eat 75K. Easily. On simple, simple things. If you really eat men food, you could easily eat 75, 80K and come out. The people are there. They go there with their girlfriends. They go there with family and all that. You won't find space. And you say that money is scarce. So the fact that you don't have it in your house or have it in your doesn't mean that money is scarce. 
And so you are going to be challenged during the five days of abundance. You, you will not believe what will happen to you anyway. So for now, um, thanks for being with me live and keep showing up. Whatever happens, because you have no idea what's coming your way next. And I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye for now and good night.